Well, it's no surprise that Sunday's mass shooting in Las Vegas has reignited the national debate over gun control. Authorities say that gunman Stephen Paddock legally purchased 33 firearms in the span of a year. Most were rifles. Now there's talk of regulating the modifier that Paddock used. That allowed several of his rifles to be fired like a fully automatic weapon. Robin Thomas is the executive director at the Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence. She joins us now from San Francisco. Robin, thank you for joining us. We know that the gunman used bump stocks to alter his rifle to fire at a faster pace, and we know that these are legal. And the GOP has signaled that it's open to regulating the devices. Do you applaud that measure? Say that last question again. Do you applaud that measure? Do you think this is a good move? Of course. Of course. Um, these are the types of accessories frankly, that never should have been legal in the first place. I mean, we've chosen as a country to regulate machine guns and automatic fire because we understand how obscenely dangerous that type of weapon would be. Bump stocks were approved by the ATF about in 2010, I think in part because technically under the letter of how our federal regulations work, they were they, there was no obstruction to having them be approved. The problem is when you see how they work, when you understand what they do, which is to turn an already extremely dangerous semi-automatic weapon into basically a fully automatic weapon that can fire a tremendous number of bullets very, very quickly. It's very clear that this is not something that we want civilians having access to, particularly when in many states you can get these even without a background check. So you're basically arming the civilian population with incredibly dangerous weapons of war. You know, Robin, it's been over two decades since Congress has managed to pass some sort of significant and substantive gun control legislation. But when you look across at the state level, are there any states who have been more successful? There are actually a tremendous number of states that have been more successful, and that's something that we are so grateful for and proud of because we've been working really hard alongside our allies across the country. We've passed almost 200 state-level gun regulations since the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School, and that's in almost 40 states. So <clears throat> we've been able to pass really sweeping reform in some states, like New York and Connecticut. We just passed Prop 63 here in California, Washington, Oregon, Colorado. I mean, there's a huge number of states, <clears throat> excuse me, that have passed really sweeping laws, and then a whole lot of states that have passed more incremental, but still positive changes, laws that strengthen domestic violence restrictions on abusers and keep guns away from them and from stalkers, laws that get mental health records into the background check system so that we can properly regulate um, keeping guns out of the hands of the most dangerous people. So we are making progress definitely at the state level. And we know that there are eight states in the U.S. that have actually put bans on large capacity magazines. And those bans have actually been linked to a decrease in mass shootings. Why do you think it is that more states haven't been able to pass similar laws? You know, when it comes to guns, we tend to not have a rational, thoughtful conversation about solutions, how to stop the next shooting, what can we do to comprehensively regulate gun violence. I mean, large capacity ammunition magazine bump stocks, these are really important topics, and especially in the wake of such a horrific, tragic mass shooting. But really, gun violence is a much bigger problem, and there are a tremendous number of effective solutions to the problem. Here in California, we've reduced gun violence by almost 60 percent by passing comprehensive reform. So there are ways to address this problem. Lots of states where there's political will, where the NRA doesn't hold legislators in a stranglehold, were able to get those reforms passed. 94%, 94% of Americans support expanding background checks to cover all gun sales. And yet Congress won't pass that law. It makes you wonder who Congress really speaks for, because they're not speaking for 94% of the American people. They speak for the NRA and for the gun manufacturers. And I think the American people are getting fed up with that. At least I hope after a tragedy like this, that people are getting fed up with a government that is beholden more to a special interest group than to the lives of American citizens. So Ron, what do you say to Americans who think gun control is just a slippery slope? Any new regulation then opens the door to encroaching on their second amendment to carry a firearm? You know, frankly, I'm, I'm a civil rights lawyer. I'm a Second Amendment scholar. That is an absurd proposition. We do have a Second Amendment. The Supreme Court has ruled on the Second Amendment and in doing so has said you have an individual right to have a gun in your home for self-defense. I believe in our courts. I believe in our Supreme Court. And if the court has said you have this right and we're not going to let anyone take it away from you, that's how it's going to be. And if they want more rights, 
than what the Supreme Court has given them under the Second Amendment, then they need to take that to the courts to be determined, which is exactly what we're doing. We're working on dozens and dozens and dozens of cases working their way through the courts where the gun lobby has challenged existing gun regulations under the Second Amendment, and courts are having an opportunity to decide if they comply with the Second Amendment. And in 95% of those cases, courts are upholding existing gun laws that protect public safety and do not infringe on an individual right to have a gun in your home for self-defense. Robin Thomas, thank you for joining us, Robin. Thank you so much for having me on.